Hello everyone and welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be a tan LUT plus deform plus green plus have to change tutorial. So we're going to start by launching and creating a new one. As you can see they have a built-in color filter but as always I like to start from scratch. That's just how I learned. So we're going to click create new project and we're going to click face tracking project. First thing that I'm just doing is I'm just making my video preview a little bigger and organizing my space um, so that I'm more comfortable. Then I'm just renaming the face tracker. Um, again, this is just to keep myself organi organized. Now I'm going to be adding a face mesh. And as always, I always, 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 always start with my retouch of face mesh. So we're going to click add material and we're going to rename it retouch. We're going to go to shader type and select retouch and I'm going to deselect full screen and I'm just going to leave the 50 up there. I'm going to go ahead and add another face mesh and we're going to name this one face copy and um, this is really important to get the retouch to show with your light. So you want to create a new material and you want to name it face copy. Then you want to change the shader type in that material to flat and you want to make sure to unselect all of your advanced render options. Then you want to click alpha to activate it and you want to go into your face assets folder and select the face mesh mask. Yes. <laughs> and what this is going to do is going to blur out the edges so that it seamless, seamlessly blends into the light. Um, the next thing you want to do is you want to add a canvas and I'm going to name my canvas background. Um, and this is because it goes in the back. And then I'm going to add a rectangle underneath my canvas and I'm going to go to size and do full width and full height. And I'm going to name my rectangle background as well. Then I'm going to add a new material for my background rectangle and this is going to host your light. Um, I'm just going to name my material background as well. I'm going to change the shader type to flat. And I'm deselecting all of my advanced render options. Then I'm taking my canvas and I'm closing the things underneath it and moving it uh, behind the face tracker. So this is why I named it background because it's, it's in the back. It's behind your face tracker. Then you want to click on camera and you want to click texture extraction. You want to go to your face tracker and you want to click texture extraction texture extraction again and I'm just renaming my camera texture um, to keep myself organized. Then you're going to hold camera texture, you're going to press shift on your keyboard and click face tr uh, tracker texture and you're going to drag it out to your patch editor. I'm going to my background uh, material and I'm clicking texture and I'm doing the same thing for my face copy, clicking texture. And um, this will bring it out in your patch editor. And then you want to import um, your fast color LUT patch. And I'll be linking it in the description. And then you want to put it in between um, the camera texture and the background texture. And in between the face tracker texture and your face copy texture. So as you can see, now it's come back to the video preview and now you want to import your LUT. So as I said I'm importing a tan LUT um, and I just have like a couple of LUTs but I'm going to use that one. You want to make sure you click no compression on all of your LUTs. This is really important to getting it to look really high quality. You also want to go to filtering and you want to change that to none. After you've done that, you want to drag out the LUT and you want to connect it to where it says LUT. So again, we connected the other ones to texture and then we connected the LUT to the LUT. And this is going to make sure that you see your retouch through it. <laughs> um, and I'm just organizing my space here. And you want to go to your face copy. Let me make this big so I can show you. There's like... Um, two eyes and two, two like lips. I don't know if you can see the lines, but you want to uncheck eyes and you want to check uncheck mouth from your face copy um, face mesh, and then the problem gets fixed. 
and you can see now the retouch is coming through your light. So this is how you do that. I know a lot of people had questions about that. Now I'm going to go ahead and add um, a couple of other stuff. So I'm going to add a blush and I'm going to add um, a new material for that. And I'm just going to rename this blush and I'm adding um, my own hand drawn textures to this because I'm going to be putting this up on my Gumroad as well for you guys to purchase if you want to. Um, and I have already a tutorial on how to do blush in one, in one of my other videos, so I'm not going to go through that again. I'm actually leaving my advanced render options on for this one and I'm changing the color to be kind of like um, a deep red. And so this is just me messing around with the colors. And I'm changing my blend mode to multiply. I do this with all of my blushes. Um, I feel like it just blends better into the skin this way. Then I'm going to go ahead and test that out on my phone to make sure that the color is um, how I like it. And that the opacity is correct. Um, so I'm actually really liking the way that it's looking right now. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm also going to add a nose highlight. So these kind of more natural um, lot filters have been really popular lately. And I'm just sort of creating one for you guys. You guys see it's super easy to do. Um, so we're going to do nose highlight. And again, I'm just adding one of my own hand-drawn nose highlight textures, but literally anyone can do this. It's just a line and a dot, as you can see my texture. Um, and again, we're making sure that we're clicking no compression on all of our textures. Um, it, most people like to do physically based for this, but I like to do flat, and I also like to change the blend mode to either add or screen. In this case... I think screen looked better, so I left it on that. And the opacity, as always, is going to be a little bit lower. So let me send this to my phone. And this makeup look is going to give you kind of a dewy skin finish, a very natural um, sort of makeup look. So now I'm going to add a new canvas. And I'm going to name it front. I'm going to add a new rectangle underneath it. And I'm going to name it front. Because I'm leaving it um, there in the front. And I'm actually naming my rectangle uh, overlay number one. Because I want to adjust the color LUT. Um, so again, I'm filling width and I'm filling height. So that it covers the whole screen. I'm creating a new material. And I'm naming it overlay zero one. I'm changing my shader type to flat and I'm unselecting all of my advanced render options. Then I'm, because I'm making a tan LUT, um, I don't know how to explain this, but in my mind, I kind of want like a dark, dark brown. So I'm just going to play around with the settings until I get that. And because I felt that my tan lot was a little too orange for me, I'm going to try and balance that out with some of the other um, contrasting colors, um, especially lighter colors. So what I'm correcting right now is the lighter colors that you'll see. So this is going to mostly affect like your exposure and your whites. So I'm changing it to screen and I'm lowering it a bit. And actually, <laughs> this is changing, um, it's kind of trying to balance between the dark and the light. And now I'm adding another rectangle and naming it overlay 2. And a new material overlay 2, changing the shader type to flat. Unselecting all of my advanced render options. And um, for I think for this one, I want to tackle the whites. <laughs> So what I did with the other one was I kind of tried to find a balance between the dark and the whites, and then this one, I kind of want to lower the, um, the exposure in the whites. So I'm using it in the blend mode multiply, and 
lowering it until I feel like it looks more balanced. I'm going to be adding another one, so I'm really just duplicating the previous one and renaming it Overlay03, and I'm also adding, creating a new material. And I'm just renaming my material Overlay03, as always changing my shader type to flat, and unselecting all of my advanced render options. And with this one, I want to attack the highlights of the face. Um, so I feel like it's a little bit too bright, so I'm changing it to add, but adding um, a dark shade so that it's not as, um, <laughs> the brightness is not like too much compared to the rest of the colors. So I'm going to go ahead and send this off to my phone and make sure that I corrected all of the things that bothered me about the light without actually going in and fixing the light. And I actually love the way it turned out. So now I'm going to be adding the grain. So I'm creating a new rectangle underneath my front canvas, renaming this rectangle grain overlay, and then I'm adding, or then I'm going full width, full height, create new material, renaming my material grain overlay. Um, changing my shader type to flat, uh, unselecting my advanced render options, and I'm just importing a noise texture. I'll have this texture linked in the description, by the way. Again, you want to click no compression, and I'm changing it to multiply. <laughs> Yeah, so if you change it to screen, your grain is going to look white, and if you change it to multiply, it's going to look um, dark black. And I'm just lowering the opacity until I'm okay with it, so I'm sending it off to my phone to check. And I think, I think it's good. I honestly, this looks, <laughs> this filter is looking really good. It looks really natural. Um, so now I'm going to show you guys how um to do the deformation so we're going to be adding the deformation next um i'm just going to sculpt something to i'm going to link this website below because i it's it's called sculpt something so you want to go to scene clear scene and you want to go to your um face assets folder that's provided to you by spark you want to go into the mesh folder and then drag out the face mesh object um over to the right on tools, I'm changing it to move. And actually, if you go to rendering, you I'm going to show you guys a quick trick that I actually learned from Wonder Milk on Instagram. So you want to go into your, um, your face assets folder and click on the, <laughs> click on the texture, the face. Okay, hold on. I did something wrong. Um, you actually want to change this to UV shader. Oops, no, go back, UV shader. And then you wanna import that texture. And I feel like this makes it so much easier to do your deformation with. Um, and just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just doing um, slimmer nose and bigger lips because this is usually what people request and what people want. Um, again, this is completely not necessary because the filter actually looked really good without it. Um, but just because people ask me, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. So after I move things, um, I like to smooth it out. And I feel like the smoothing tool kind of makes things look less choppy <laughs> I don't know if you guys are going to understand that um so yeah this just pushing up the lips a bit um and little tiny movements on this object actually aren't as little as it looks when you apply it to your 
face mesh. So I'll show you guys that in a minute. So once you like what you've done, you're going to go to File, Save, OBJ. And that's going to go straight to your Downloads folder. And we're going to click on our Face Copy Face Mesh. And underneath that one, um, you want to make sure you do it under that one because that one's already connected in the patch. You want to put in your, your deformation. And as you can see, it's already been applied. Her lips are bigger and her nose is just a bit slimmer. And I'm going to send this off to my phone to make sure that it doesn't look ridiculous. <clears throat> so I actually <laughs> love the way this turned out. I just feel like the skin looks super dewy, the makeup looks super natural, the way the light is hitting just looks great. So we're going to go to edit properties and we're going to make sure we're selecting um, face tracking high accuracy and then we're also going to do the instructions for the tap to change. So you want to go to device, you want to click on um, tap to change and then it's going to show the it's going to automatically pop up in your patch editor so you, again you're going to go to on opening and then click tap to change and it's just going to drag it into the patch editor by itself you can change the time but i'm leaving mine at five seconds um this is how long the instructions will display on the screen and then i'm just checking to make sure that it's in my properties and then you want to right click on your patch editor and you want to click screen tap and then you wanna, let me zoom in, and you wanna drag out from tap and you wanna click counter. So this is basically gonna tell the system how many tap to chains you have in your filter. Um, so I'm just changing mine to two because we're just gonna do tap on and tap off the grain. Then you wanna right click and you wanna click equals exactly and I'm just command C, command V pasting it because I have two tap to chains. So I need two equals exactly. I'm changing the second number to one because your um, starter number is always going to be zero. And then I'm going to my grain overlay and clicking visibility on the left and then connecting that to the first one. Now I'm just going to stimulate touch and if I drag this out, you'll see that the grain comes off when you tap to change, when you tap the screen. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's about it and it didn't take that long and now... It looks great and now you have a tan lot plus deformation plus retouch plus grain <laughs> and I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like so like I said you can't really tell <laughs> but like I said the skin looks really dewy the way the light is hitting it looks great um, it's just in my opinion it's a really nice simple natural filter so as always I'll have the links in my description Thank you for watching. <laughs>